could see something on her face wasn't right. And we both kind of had the same face at the same time because we noticed as soon as I hit the key on the piano, something wasn't right. And I remember the, the piano tuner, and I, I won't take but just a second here, but uh, I remember the piano to uh, tuner put me on a schedule, and we're, we still got about two months of when he's supposed to come back. But just from now, uh, from the time I last sat down at the piano, something had changed, and my mind come across this song, and I, I can't think of it, I uh, can't think of the, the actual song, but I know some words of it uh, say, Tune my heart to sing your praise. And uh, I thought about my life, Brother Dale, as uh, this word of God so many times we're guilty of putting it on the shelf. When we go to reach for it, we've got to wipe off the dust. So many times we've got to take out our weed eater and go to our prayer spot. We've got to cut down the things that we've let grow in the path. We've gotten weak. We've gotten weary in this fight, church. But we've got to get back because we know that if we read God's word and if we follow along with it, that we're on the winning side. We've got to follow along. We've got to have our heart tuned uh, to sing His praise in everything. I, as, as I was sitting there a minute ago, I was praying, God, would you tune my heart again? again. Sometimes I come in here and I feel like, Brother Dale, I'm so out of tune. I feel like sometimes I'm nowhere near where I even need to be. I know sometimes we stray off the path. Not that I've got any sin or anything to my knowledge in my life, but so many times, Brother Joe Larkin, I feel like in my life that I can do so much more than I do. I feel like I can read more chapters than I read. I feel like there's more hours in my life that I can pray. There's so much more in our our life that we uh, that, that we give to the devil instead of the Lord. I want my heart to be tuned right. I don't know what to do. I feel like singing a song, but I don't know what to sing, to be honest with you. I love you, Jesus. <clears throat> I've failed the Lord many times, and I'm so glad he's never failed me. That song Kimmy Dong sings, he's never given up on me. I've given him many reasons, Brother Homer, where he should have given up on me, but thank God he never has. He's never failed me. In the mess of this old world, sometimes I just need a word from heaven that everything's okay. I try to walk by faith, but sometimes I'm so afraid, and I cannot see how God can make a way, but then I think He's never failed me, never left me, not one time have I cried out. And my voice he has not heard, never failed me. He won't start today, he will make a way. He's never failed me, as broken as you feel. Oh, your troubles, they are real. And I know that you feel God's forsaken you. But child, don't lose your faith. He is working while you wait. So just hold on. He will bring you through. He's never failed me. Never left me. Not one time have I cried out, and my voice he has not heard, never failed me. He won't start today, he will make a way, he's never failed me. As the world looks upon me, as I struggle along, 
And they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing, and how I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on <coughs> my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I know I'm not wealthy, and these clothes are not new, and I don't have much money, but Lord, I have you, and to me, that's all that matters, though the world may not see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. <clears throat> There's a roof up above me. I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on <coughs> my feet you gave me your love lord and a fine family thank you lord for your blessings on me He counts the stars, one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shores. Sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything, of all creatures, great and small. And he knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I've cried. He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain, can't see the light of Don't know what tomorrow will bring I can't tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't have all the answers To the questions of life But I know in whom I have believed step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I've cried, and He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain, 
But he took the loss, and he knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I've cried, and he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed. Last night I heard them singing over on that peaceful shore. What a time when I can join them over there. I have almost taught the mountain where the robes of Sharon Praise the Lord, I have a better place to go. And I'm so glad that I know when I leave, I have a better place to go. I have almost taught the mountain where the rose of Sharon grows. Praise the Lord, I have a better place to go. I remember at an altar, though it's been so long ago. When I gave my heart to Jesus, kneeling there. Oh, how precious is that memory when His love came shining through. And I started to my home beyond the blue. Help me, church. And I'm so glad that I know when I leave, I have a better place to go. While I'm waiting at the crossing, looking back at friends once more, Glory to God, I have a better place to go. Praise the Lord. I'm glad it's better farther on. As Brother Johnny's already said, he's going to prepare a place for us. Buddy, that place is going to be perfect. Perfect. The things we know as trouble down here will never be able to enter into those gates. And I am grateful. I'm glad he knows my name. I'm glad he knows where I'm at. I'm thankful he knows every my getting up and my sitting down. He knows my going out. He knows my thoughts. He knows my breath. He knows my heartbeat. He knows everything about me. What a shepherd. Thank you, Lord. And you can tell him anything, Seth. You can tell him anything. You can bring anything to him. He's never laughed at it. He said you can cast 
every one of your cares on me. Because he said, I care. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Counts the stars, one and all. Knows how much sand is on the shore. You've heard me say this many times. Some of you's got them on your arm now as we speak. Carry them in your pocket. You can tell how many steps you've took in a day. How many times your heart's beat in a day. My boy's got a thing on his chest. Even as we speak, they put it on there today. Going to leave it on there two weeks and they can plug it in a computer and look at every heartbeat. But they've never been able to come up with a device to count the tears come out of your eyes. You see, you can come in this building and put on makeup if you do that. Put a smile. Hide behind it. Everybody on the outside looking at you thinks everything's great. But on the inside and when you're at home and nobody's looking, you wallow that pillow around at night looking for the cool side. And them, them wet spots with all those tears and you wipe them off before you go out into public. God is putting them in a bottle. And He knows exactly how many tears that have fallen. So I'm thankful I know a God that cares about everything. We serve a good God, don't we? Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles tonight, Psalms chapter 51. I've preached from these scriptures many times, but it's on my heart. Brother Ethan should have just went ahead because he is preaching exactly what I feel like the Lord's put on my heart. And uh, preaching, I'm going to just mention a few things that I feel like the Lord has given me. And uh, hope and pray that we can draw closer to God than we've ever been. Now, it, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out this thing's about done. It don't take a brain surgeon to realize we're right down in the closing of the door. This thing's done. Amen. And it ain't no time to draw back. But I'm going to tell you, it's very easy to do. Very easy to do. Help us, God. Help us. Very familiar scripture. You can probably quote it with your eyes closed. Verse number 10. Psalms 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. That's all that I'll read tonight. And you've probably heard me preach from this several times, but this is what God has put in my spirit. And as Ethan was talking about uh, hitting the keys on the piano, and it's sounding different. There's been nobody up here uh, with a wrench turning nothing. There's been nobody up here as far as I know. Amen. If they are, they shouldn't have been. But there ain't nobody up here beating on anything to make it go out of tune. Those guitars hanging over there on the wall, you can tune those things with the tuner, hang them on the wall and nobody touch them and walk away from them and come back Sunday. Amen. And they'll have to be tuned again. And I'll tell you why. Amen. It ain't because somebody's played them unskillful. It's because the coldness that comes in this building changes. Amen. The tuning of the instrument. Amen. I want to say tonight, Brother Homer, I'm thankful that the Lord, amen, saved me and I appreciate him changing me but I want to say there's more to it than walking down an aisle and saying save me amen and march on into heaven and thinking that you ain't never going to have to be tuned up in it I've been working up there amen below my house a little bit and I've been working for a while and, and uh, there's a beautiful place up there where I've been working and uh, there's a big old fish pond about as big as this church I guess and he said it's about 15 feet deep uh, so I guess it's about as deep as this church is high and uh, just a beautiful place got a big old dock built out in 
seen a trout jumping out of the water and I thought man what a beautiful place uh, but he told me yesterday he said that pond has been there uh, since back in the 60s and I uh, said that thing uh, was built a long time ago and uh, he said uh, that over the years he said that thing's filled up with silt and he said when I bought this a few years back I uh, said you could walk across that pond amen about anywhere you wanted to and because uh, he had filled up and uh, come off the mountains and clogged it up and uh, the flood come and washed it and gutted it out amen but I said all that to say this uh, the Bible said created us a clean heart oh God amen can I say I'm thankful for what God's done in my life hey, but let's be honest amen the world that we live in hey, you gotta keep yourself clean down you gotta cleanse yourself hey, we gotta be sure the temperature amen in our spiritual life hey, don't get cold that we get out of tune amen the sad part is amen that we get satisfied with operating being out of tune hey, there's a piano up there at my daddy's I can't hardly stand to hear it hey, because it ain't in tune ain't anything wrong with the piano amen but it's out of tune and can I say tonight if there's ever a time that God needs a church that's in tune it's right now amen I heard somebody say today amen they went to the word of church and the coldness that was in the house of so the Lord can I say amen it's everywhere you go amen there's coldness in the house of the Lord but amen there's a lot of people that simply just got used to the dark because our lives has clogged up with the world and we need to get renewed we need to clean it out we need to say God help us not to be used to the dark and sit in a church that is cold help us amen to be able to clean it out get in our life with the word of God and clean us up, tune us up and so we can be used for the glory of God. Amen. I told my wife today, I'm not going to preach long. Amen. But in order for that pond to get back to its original state, it had to be restored. Amen. You had, I, well, they had to create a new pond because it had filled so full of silt. Create in me a clean heart. Come on, talk to me. A clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Oh God. Coming down there, I've met in the last 12 months. Bryson's not here. Yeah, he is. There he is. He wasn't sitting in your regular seat. Him and Joe are on the fire department and they can testify to this. I've never in all of my life, and I've lived in Crusoe for 49 years, seen as many car accidents as I have on Crusoe Road in the last 12 months. You go around every curve, there's a pile of oil where somebody's had an accident. Drugs raging on every hand. Amen, you meet them. They scare me to death. Amen, driving plumb over on my side of the road. Amen, running me out of the road all the time. They don't even know they're in the world. Amen. Have head on collision. Amen. If there's ever a time that they needs to be some men of God and some women of God that's in tune, that can touch somebody's life. And when you meet them on the street, hey, there's more to living for God than coming in here and sitting down. Your ministry's out yonder. I said your ministry's out yonder. You're set in Sunday school so you can get tuned up to go out yonder. I preach to you. You teach to me. They preach to me so I can get my life in tune and go out yonder and we need to have a new spirit we need to have a spirit of God living on the inside of us let's don't get clogged up with the cares of this world or we'll be no different than they are they need somebody to tell them about a hope that can get them out of the trouble they're in amen when you roll up on a wreck and they're leaving here they need to be more Amen, than a bag you can pull out of a, light, a vehicle with lights flashing. There needs to be a man somewhere that can tell them about a God and get them out of trouble. God, help us. Amen, help us that when we run into people out here in the world that our heart is clean. Clean. How clean are you? How clean is your heart? What do we fill ourselves with? I heard what you said. Thank you for saying that. And I'm as guilty as anybody. 
We need to be getting closer to God instead of drifting so far away. God, help us to realize where we are. Just because the world's going to hell in a handbasket don't mean you got to. Just because the church as a whole is sitting there stale and cold don't mean we got to be. Amen. I said it don't mean we got to be. Amen. We can still fast and pray. We can still get a hold of God. Amen. We can still have fire. Amen. I heard Brother Johnny said the other night, he went to a meeting several years ago and he said when he got a hold of the doorknob, he could feel the power of God run through him because somebody got a hold of God. Hey, Beth Eden, come on, talk to me. Help us to clean our heart. Help us to renew our spirit. We need to have a spirit that the world can see and look at. Amen. We want to win somebody. We're going to have to have a clean heart and a renewed spirit and restore in us the joy of our salvation. Amen. You're going to look at the news. You're going to get discouraged and say, what's the use? But read the Bible. And I say, look up your redemption draw nigh and let's reach everybody we can reach while we can. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody don't like this way. Everybody don't like this way. Amen. These people that don't come here to church now because they've said out of their own mouth, I know if I come, he's going he's to just he's gonna preach on how I'm living. Amen. Now I'm not, I have been in my ministry. And I'll be honest, if every preacher would be honest, they probably have been too, especially in my younger ministry. I've been a striker. If I know there's somebody sitting in the congregation that was guilty, man, I'd get up and I'd just lash out at them directly because they was living in sin. And they would sit back there knowing good and well. I heard one fellow say he beat on his wife. He was a sinner. He beat on his wife. He drunk. He done all that stuff. He finally got him talked into coming to church. Preacher got up that night and all he preached on. He knew how he was because his wife come to his church. He got up and he preached on everything about a man beating on his wife, doing all that. Amen. He gave an altar call and that fellow just sat there. Wouldn't move. After they dismissed, said that fellow come up to that preacher and said, I knew everything you preached was to me, and I know it was. I know I'm a wife beater, and I know I've been drunk. I know I've got all, all into that because of my sin, but I come here tonight trying to look for a way out, and you didn't give me one. Amen. The letter killeth, but the spirit, hey, you know what that preacher did? He said, everybody sit back down. Everybody sat back down. That sat man sat back down. Amen. He told about a man hung between the heavens and the earth that could rescue out of anything. Amen. It don't matter what you've done. He loves you and he'll save you. How can I say? Amen. The sinners know they're sinning. They know they don't want to be a dope head, but they can't help it. But where's the church that can tell them, hey, hey, there is a way out. Jesus is a deliverer. I said Jesus is a deliverer and we need to have a clean heart and a right spirit so that they'll see there's a better life. You need to be their friend and let them know there's a real Jesus. As the preacher told me one time, some of the best advice I ever got, Brother Johnny, you got to prove to man you'll be his friend before you can ever win him to Jesus. Amen. If every time I see you, I beat on what you're doing, you're never going to come hear me preach. If I shake your hand and tell you I love you and talk about coon hunting because that's what you like to do. It won't be many days until the Holy Spirit will open that door and let me plant that seed of faith. You know, you don't even got enough faith to believe in Jesus. But he'll give you a measure of faith to believe back in him. Hallelujah. And it might be your life that carries that seed. And if your heart's not clean, when you meet that sinner, you'll say the wrong thing because you've got a dirty heart. Amen. These things that they do, I don't like. And I'd like to bless them out because of what they're doing. But if I've got a clean heart, amen, I won't point out their fault. I'll tell them about a Savior that could clean them up. Hallelujah. Lord, help us to have a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Amen. I see foul spirits everywhere. We need to have a spirit like Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ. Stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. Help us, amen, to get back to the basics of winning Jesus, people to Jesus, amen. 
Clean our hearts, Lord. Clean us. Let's just be honest. And I'm as guilty as all of you are. We filled our life full of Google. It don't matter if you Google deer hunting, cooking, basketball, coon hunting, squirrel hunting, rat hunting. Whatever you want to do is on there. Sitting down there at my daddy's the other day, and I Google rat hunting. You sit there for 10 hours and do nothing, you'll Google it too. So here's these fellers that's got rat terriers or little old dogs, and they pull a chicken house out of the way with a tractor, and there's one man killed 512 wharf rats out of one barn. I mean, everything he'd turn over, there'd be wharf rats running. He'd be going up his leg. He'd be grabbing them. He had that dog trained to shake that rat and go put it in that five-gallon bucket. Beat anything I've ever seen. Now, you think, would you like to have rats like that at your house? Man, that intrigued me so much, I'd look into the next one. Burn it down. He tore it down. He really did with a skid steer. 512 wharf rats in one neighborhood. So I went on and watched them catch 40 or 50 wild hogs in a cage. So I went on to watch them tree squirrels with a mountain feist. And then I went on to watch them catch brown trout. What's wrong with all that? It took so much time. So much time. And if God could be there, he'd say, where am I in your life? I know where you're at when you get in trouble. You want to pull me up close and tell me you love me and want me to fix all your problems, but where are you when it's all good? All of that stuff would be fun. I love, I got a little old squirrel dog, me and these boys, Brother Johnny, whoever else wants to go, Seth. We get out in the woods and fellowship and walk around. That's good. I enjoy doing that. But you got to be careful. All that stuff flooding through your heart will give you a dirty heart because God is put in the back burner. There was a time, boy, it's quiet and I'm so guilty. There was a time you could, I heard an old preacher say, he said in our neighborhood we could go out in the yard and hang a lantern in an apple tree and he said in an hour's time there would be enough people standing in our yard to have a prayer meeting. But now we can call a prayer meeting and we'll stay in the altar five minutes and we're done. Because our mind is going somewhere else. And our people are going to hell and our hearts. I'm not saying you're sinning, but I'm saying we're flooded. The place where Jesus used to sit is now took a back seat and something else has took its place. I, love, I like Christmas movies. But I'll tell you a sickening thing that happened to us this year. Kendra brought, got a Christmas movie that's supposed to be good. Was it Dove approved? Wasn't Dove approved, but is it? Christian, which the first word of that means Christ. Just a little bit into that movie, guess what pops up? cussing homosexuality in a Christmas movie and if you ain't real careful you can't catch it because you got your guard down this is Christmas and sitting over here in the corner is little eyes that's looking at that screen there's a fellow that talked to me about something going on in his church. And he said, I don't know how to handle it. They're new in the Lord. I said, I understand that completely. But you better be careful that your children don't get used to that and think that you're okay with it. Hey, we say we draw a line, but do we? We brag a big old brag, but do we hold the reins when it comes time? 
We say if it ain't Jesus, it ain't nothing. But we'll let that music come sliding in our life. And our hearts begin to get stained. And before long, the light gets so dim that the world can see no difference. We'll pass by on the other side because we know in our heart that our heart ain't conditioned right to go to that man in the ditch. And, in, and when that happens, you'll get a foul spirit. You can fast and have a bad spirit. You can stand behind the pulpit and have a bad spirit. We need our spirit renewed. We need a spirit like his. Have you ever come in church and seen somebody's head down? You ever seen somebody with a bad spirit? It'll get off on everybody around you. And if my wife's got a bad spirit and everybody in here sees it, because I love her, I'll try to cover over for it. But the root of the problem is she needs a renewed spirit. Go ahead, boys, say your wife needs one. It's okay to say amen. Don't talk about your wife. Don't talk about your husband. Don't talk about your neighbor. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. So many times we should come in this church with more praise than we give. We should sit in these pews with more thanksgiving than we do. We should have a testimony and sing with tears coming down our face. But because it ain't that you've been out here drinking and drugging and doing all that crazy stuff of the world, but all the stuff has bombarded us. And what we used to do was we'd go over behind them logs and in them laurel thickets, as, as he's already said, the weeds has grown up and we filled our heart with things that has clouded our view of the right way. Jesus, as he begins to play, Create in me. What's that word mean? Create. Start from nothing and make something. You've got to create it and renew something that's already there and needs some help.